And in state after state, they're doing everything they can to stop black people, Latinos, poor people, young people, people with disabilities from voting. It's a blast from the Jim Crow past. I thought we had won that battle back in the 1960s. To see it rear its ugly head is such a great disappointment. It's one of the barriers that I intend to knock down. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, joining us now, very happy to say, is Hans von Spakovsky, senior legal fellow at the Heritage Foundation and former FEC and uh, DOJ attorney. Hello, Hans. Hey, Steve. How are you doing? Good. Long time and too long. I'm glad you're with us. Okay, so two things I want to talk to you about. First of all, uh, beyond what Hillary was talking about in her nonsensical claim that we're going back to Jim Crow, even Webb Hubble yesterday on this show said it was just political rhetoric. Um, but you wrote a great piece at National Review that talks about how the, uh, the DOJ and Loretta Lynch is, are helping make sure that illegals, illegals, non-citizens can vote in the upcoming election. Yeah, that's right. Listen, a number of states have been very smart, uh, Kansas, Alabama, Georgia, Arizona, and they have passed laws that say that when you register to vote, you have to provide proof of U.S. citizenship. Uh, Kansas then went to a federal agency in Washington. It's called the U.S. Election Assistance Commission, uh, and they're the ones in charge of the federal one-page voter registration form. This is a form you can use to register to vote anywhere in the country. And they said to the uh, EAC, look, you need to change the instructions for any residents of our states using this federal form to tell them that when they register to vote using that federal form, they also are going to have to provide proof of citizenship. The EAC said, okay, we will do that. And they immediately got sued uh, February 12th by a host of uh, left-wing groups, um, the NAACP, uh, the League of Women Voters, uh, Project Vote, saying, no, you can't allow the states to do that. You can't let them check on the citizenship of voters. And we want a temporary restraining order from a federal judge saying, you can't do this. And uh, where does the Justice Department enter into this? Well, <laughs> very interesting. This past Monday, a hearing was scheduled before a federal judge in uh, Washington, Judge Richard Leon, to hear the arguments for a temporary restraining order. The Justice Department, whose job it is to defend the federal government, and particularly independent federal agencies like the EAC, came into court, and instead of defending the EAC, they came in on the side of the plaintiffs, Unreal. the League of Women Voters. Unreal. And not only did they not defend the EAC, but when the EAC said, well, okay, if you want to, won't defend us, let us hire our own lawyers. The Justice Department said, no, we won't let you do that. So, well, how could they be denied representation? Well, under federal law, it's the Justice Department that's tasked with uh, defending federal agencies, and they can't get their own lawyer unless the <laughs> Justice Department gives them permission. So, you know, it's a catch-22. Now, fortunately, we had a good federal judge, Judge Leon. He was he was astonished and dismayed at what was going on. He said he had not seen uh, the Justice Department act in such a manner in his entire legal career. So what, what's next? I want to I move on to the next one. So where, where do we go okay. from here? Fortunately, on Tuesday, uh, the judge refused to issue a temporary restraining order. He scheduled another hearing for March 9th, and the EAC has now asked directly for the judge to appoint uh, Good. special counsel to represent. Good. Okay. The issue of Antonin Scalia having right. votes that he already took on cases that are pending but have not been revealed yet. Um, can his votes count? Votes that he has already made that, that, that are waiting to be made public. Uh, the, the, the assumption is he passed away, so no. He, those votes go bye-bye. It's as if he never voted. But is there a provision to count those votes? Is it allowable or is there a provision in the Constitution or somewhere in the court that says, no, 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 those cannot be counted? Or is it all up to the discretion of Chief Justice Roberts? Uh, there's no written rule on this. It's all up to the discretion of Chief Justice Roberts. And we should make it clear, immediately after oral argument in a case, the justices all go to a private conference room 
and they have a vote, and they say how they will vote on this case. So the Chief Justice knows exactly how Justice Scalia voted on all the cases that have been argued before he died. There is nothing that stops the Chief Justice from giving effect to those votes. Uh, I wrote an article about this for National Review recently, and I found at least two cases uh, in which the uh, justices made clear, in fact, they were giving effect to uh, two justices of the court who had passed away before the decision so, was actually So you think issued. that they should count? I, I think they should count. Uh, I right. think his, his, his vote should be given effect. Hans, great to talk to you, sir. Thank you very, very much. Give me five is next, folks.